Hey, Tammy here. Well, I couldn't be at the 50 year celebration of the Patterson Gimlin film. I wish I could have, but I'm glad I wasn't. Drama. Well, Richter and Diane and Abe, they went to the Patterson Gimlin film site 50 years to the day. And that's what this show is about. Welcome to After Hours. My name is Richter. I am your host. Richter! What? Leave him alone! This shit is real. Now we got Richter go and we're gonna have to hear it about it all night. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bunch of screaming memes out there and that's the scoop that has been reported so far. Thanks for driving me like a stud. I'm not interested in believing in something. Either it's real or it's not. By your opinion that you are no kill, you are dooming the species to be extinct. They are what they are. It doesn't matter what we call them. Let's remove ourselves from them a little bit. And I think that's something that the Bigfoot community can actually learn a little bit from. I actually am trying to push the envelope of science here. When are we going to make a video, Richter? And I mean not an X-rated one. Dr. Todd, you've also been called the scoff dick. <laughs> yeah, well, have these creatures stood against a backdrop of trees, I probably never would have seen them. You can't talk about I can't. So you guys are going to bag a Bigfoot and get us a body. We're giving it uh, our best efforts. We thought that we had the holy grail of DNA. Our hero, Bob Gimlin's with us. Hello, is this thing on? Am I muted? Can you hear me? Hey, Richter, I've got a question for you. How does it feel to lose Bigfoot Bounty? Hmm. My question is, why do you think Bigfoot is real? Richter does put a lot of effort <laughs> into his costuming, doesn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, by effort, if you mean bending over and picking up whatever's on the floor. My. Well, in my opinion, After Hours with Richter is the number one Bigfoot webcast. Uh, what's your name again? Oh. Don't piss Richter off. <laughs> Richter, behave. Hey everybody, guess what? This is a surprise after hours with Richter. I am at the Bluff Creek Patterson Gimlin film site. I've been close to it before, with thanks to Struford and Jamie Wayne of the Bluff Creek Project, but now I'm actually here celebrating the Patterson Gimlin film with a lot of dear friends and that's the 50th anniversary of whatever it was that was filmed here so long ago. Wow, I'm actually here. So right now, Danny Perez from the Bigfoot Times, Daniel Perez, excuse me, he doesn't like it when I call him Danny. Daniel Perez uh, is giving people uh, a tour. Pretty cool. Nice. Nice to come to the film site and find Daniel Perez from the Bigfoot Times uh, giving us a tour of where Roger filmed Patty walking this way on her merry way. Yes. So enjoy the show. Okay, so we just had our pictures taken over here at the Bluff Creek sign. That's really sign. It's right there. right there. And there's the creek yeah. down there. Yeah, we'll show you the creek. Yeah. And where are we going? We're going to the film site. We're going to the film site. Where Bigfoot was filmed 50 years Patty. ago. Patty was filmed. Patty. She's named now. Oh. Okay, you didn't know this? Of course I did. <laughs> you know this during the pot. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Check out the river. That's Bluff Creek. That's the creek. She called Bluff River. Huh. All right, they're not going to wait for us. Nope. Yeah, okay, let's go. And there goes Abe Del Rio, Mario Andretti. Are you ready, Madonna? Come on now. Let's get on the car. All right, bye. Racing gloves on. Okay. All right, we are walking down to Bluff Creek. We made it safely. Crystal's car got left behind. <laughs> we went through rain, snow. ice, and snow. And it's so sweet of Bigfoot to be Look at the size of these leaves. <laughs> yeah, Bigfoot's gifting you. I'm getting presents. But look at the baby trees. Look at that. Little Christmas trees. How the hell am I going to get these on the plane? Just mail them to yourself. Put them in an envelope. So here's the view. We're thinking about expanding this Bluff Creek Trail. We're going to put a concession stand over there to the right. You are, Rick, you're thinking of it. <laughs> We're going to come back here with the rake and 
tidy up the trail a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, oh. yeah. We're almost there. Look, here's another rock Ooh, stack. another stick formation, tree, uh, rock formation. Oh my gosh. Bigfoot's here. Oh Ooh, I heard a whoop. <laughs> did you hear that? I did. It was probably Kevin. Or Abe. Uh, which way do we go, George? Which way do we go? I guess we don't go that way. No. Amazing. Wow. Nathan Rio, Utah Sasquatch, doesn't show you that on his YouTube channel, does he? <laughs> I'm such a cynical bitch. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. I just didn't want you filming my... Your posterior? Yeah. I'm sure I already got it. Probably. Hey, we got poop! Yeah. Bigfoot scat. No. Wow, amazing. It's Richard, honey, that's not big foot <laughs> scat. Really? Okay. <laughs> that's bear. Look how pretty this rock is right here. <laughs> what are you, what are you laughing at? <laughs> you looking at poop? Yeah. Well, he's sitting there saying, oh, it's Bigfoot poop. I'm like, no, no, honey, it's not. Of course I know it's not Bigfoot poop. That means it would have to be Bigfoot to make the poop. Oh! Rector, honey, they're all Bigfoot. Okay, honey. <laughs> oh, careful. That wasn't me. That wasn't me this time. Mm -mm. We're doing Facebook Live right now from Bluff Creek. Welcome to MMBRT Radio. I'm your host, Abe Del Riolo. Joining me is Henry May, Abe, all the way over there trying to get to your chat room. All right, which way did we go? That's why. Uh oh. Don't fall, Richter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit wet, and these are not the best hiking shoes. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. One step at a time. That's uh, Dave and Kevin Morrison. And Brian. We got a little creek here. Is this Bluff Creek? Is this what all the talk is about? Shit. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, Crystal. You got it? I'm up. I almost lost it. Wish I had my walking stick. Let me drop something. Look at the size of that thing. What is that? What'd you find? Bigfoot oh, gifted you? Bigfoot. Bigfoot makeup? It's lipstick. <laughs> We have lipstick. So how many times have you been down here, Diane? <coughs> Twice. Twice. Third time's a charm. Okay. With all the people that come down here now, Maybe you can start like charging people for Bigfoot tours. Uh, no. Oh, but look, see? <laughs> Bigfoot Obviously blocked us. For us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's bugs. What? Bugs. Oh. They won't hurt you, dear. It's very pretty. Yeah, look at all these leaves. Wow. I guess it is considered autumn already, isn't it? Uh-oh, it's raining a little bit.
It was absolutely beautiful down here. Mm -hmm. I must say, I look good in leather. Oh, <laughs> you should say, oh Lord. <laughs> I said, oh Lord. <laughs> And there's Kip. <laughs> and a little doggy. <clears throat> hey, you never know who you'll find in the bushes. Hey, really? Really? <laughs> Hi, puppy. Hello, sweetie. You're going to make it down on the 50th. We thought we were the only one. Your biker jacket, no less. Well, that's the way to do it. Hi. Rowdy. Oh, I finally get to meet you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Well, finally. Good. How are you? Oh my god. <laughs> cool. So oh, you you've been down oh, yeah. here, Jamie. Well, and... Not all the way down. Oh, not all the way down. Only it's oral. Coffee. <laughs> and, and I, not all the way. We were Pot outside at one o'clock. Okay. And uh Major weekend. Yeah. with Daniel Perez yeah. and Ian Carton down okay. there. Okay. And uh, but I have to get Kip? back and start <laughs> <our> <laughs> presentation. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you're going back up. I wish I could walk you guys in, in. but Holy I need shit. to be back That's by funny. four to oh, make sure that uh, we're ready to go at five tonight. Is that your little doggy? That's Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Oh my gosh. Yes, Chloe. Hey, Chloe. Hey, Chloe. How are you doing from Beach? Yeah, my, my dog's here. It's pretty cool. Hey, howdy. Chloe. Yeah, okay. Nice to see you. Chloe. You guys can barely make Chloe. Did you bring your pizza kit anyway? No, not this time. So, uh, Daniel Perez, Crystal, and okay. Right now. <laughs> awesome. Danny, Danny, and none Danny. of you have been to the site, right? No. Oh, I have, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so we have puppy. Oh, 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 oh. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's a Bigfoot dog. Oh, yeah. It's a Bigfoot doggy. Yeah. yeah. Just keep going up stream and uh, you'll find a convoluted trail on the other side. You can get in the water there and keep going upstream. Uh, but another 400, 500 yards, you'll be at the site. But you, you guys have radios? I figured we'd run into you tonight. Okay. Uh, Ian, I think, has a radio. But I'll tell them that you guys are coming down to look okay. for and, and if you feel like you, know, you, you, you won't go past them, I promise you, that if they're still there, you, they might be wandering in the woods. But if you feel like you've gone too far, you know, yell out for those guys. They should still be down there. I wish I could walk in. Yes. We walked in. What do you think of it? Yes, we should be there. Oh, it's nice. All right, as we continue on to Bluff Creek, we just bumped into our friends Kip Morrill, and I got to meet Rowdy Kelly for the first time. He's very cute. Who he thinks he's cute, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Yep. Is he married? Probably. Okay, but I don't think he's gay, dear. I don't think he's gay. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just trying to help you out there. What are these guys doing? They're picking leaves. What you finding, Brian? I was looking at the baby river. It's probably not really big. It's fine. PG Trail. PG Trail. <laughs> it's probably the Patterson Gimlin Trail. Or it's too. rated PG. <laughs> Parental guidance suggested. Well, we got Diane here. Oh, no, that, okay. <laughs>
Do the truck cam? Those are cameras. <laughs> Look at this tree. Wow. Bluff Creek. Check it out. This has some kind of significance. Is this? She went up that way. Did she go up that way? We're not um, here. Probably. We're not here oh, yeah. No, he said we had to cross the creek, and then. He said we're gonna be it's kinda of tricky we have to go. He said make a hard right. So we could cross. Hard right. Yeah, um, well I don't think this I wouldn't do that. Abe. 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 Don't be a Richter. Oh yeah. Thanks for the yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal's bringing it up. Right? The wall on the left very stable. This one's a springy. Jump, Richter. Oh, I gotta have my camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, Richter, honey, your phone. <laughs> springing? No. Nope. Nope, that one's springing. Are they good? Yeah. Thank you. That one's solid. solid. One on the left. Thanks, brother. Thanks, man. I was going to say, you can leave your leaves here, bud. We got nine to go, right? I mean, nine. Five. Six. Kevin. Woo! Kevin, Dave, and Andy. Come on, Diane. Let's hear your Bigfoot scream. I don't do different screens. Sorry. Should I do mine? Uh, go ahead. Hey! That was lovely. Yes, Gaga! Yes! No? <laughs> I'm going to get some on the way out. <laughs> Yeah, Bigfoot did that. That's right. Bit it. Bit it. Yeah. Totally.
The water's pretty. Very clear. Check it out. Let's throw one in there. What? What did I do? I just threw a walk in the water. Get in trouble. Don't you want to throw a rock in there too? That's a big one. Would you? So twelve. Careful! I'll throw you in there. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, where are we going? Uh. Shit. God, this shit is cold. Uh. Wait, wait, wait. Hold this video. Are you trying to tell me that these Bigfooters went on a hike down to Bluff Creek, but they didn't have any water, food, they weren't even wearing hiking shoes, they didn't have bear spray, no cell coverage, no GPS, and one of their cars ran out of gas? What are we dealing with here? Tourists? Oh, that was deep. Right, it is deep. <laughs> Feet are wet. Nice to meet you. What state? For all those who don't know, this is Daniel Perez. Daniel Perez. Daniel Perez. Oh, you're the one who put the sign up. Hi. Andy Ola. What? Andy. From what state? Ohio. Oh my, all the Ohio Daniel. people. Kevin from Ontario, Canada. Yeah, I am yeah, sure. Yeah. Kevin Morris. Yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> Oregon. Oh, Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. <laughs> oh, the donkey. We have New <laughs> Hampshire. Yeah. Where yeah, you go? we just Oregon, Oregon, knows I'm yeah. from Vegas, Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. Where you go when you need to know. Canada. Canada. <laughs> exactly. God, I'm so, so glad you made it. Wow. Minnesota. Yeah. Represent. So, now, is this everyone? Yeah. Yes. Well, we may as well have a crash course. Let's do it. Uh, uh, and I'll do the, the introductions here. Oops. Who's been to the film site here before? Never. Race. Ian has, Ian's been here. I have, times. not to the exact one, but very close. Okay, so you've been Twice, close. yeah. Okay. This is absolutely, positively the film site. As, as you know, there cannot be an alternative alternative fact where there's two film sites. There's only one. So we're going to go for a little walk. This is my dog, by the way, Pre, so you can say hi to him and feed him. <laughs> In general, the general filming started from this location here. Uh, now understand, understand just, yeah. uh, at the time, 50 years ago, there was more Probably bank more. here. Oh, this this real estate went out a little further, mm -hmm. so Roger started filming over here. Now that. what you have to understand as well, see the creek? The creek is about, what, maybe 20 feet below? At the time when this film was shot, that creek was about 3 feet below this bank. Because this, what we're on right now, is the original bank, the original mm -hmm. film Sand, site. Sandbar. So what, what's happened over the years, all of that area has been eroded. So as it, as, as it erodes, Good the creek run. bed just keeps going down mm -hmm. and down mm -hmm. and down. So that's why the creek is so low, but at the time, the creek was much higher up. And so they're coming around from over here, and that general vicinity, Roger and Bob, the subject is probably in this general area and it reacts possibly to maybe hoof prints or whatever but uh, according to uh, an interview with Bob Gimlin that John Green did he said what was the subject first seen when you saw it he said it was getting up so that would assume that it was it was right there at the creek got up and just started walking away so as we walk forward here We'll go look. Uh, two things that I, I want. There's a, there's a stump called a smiley face, and then there's a big stump. Those stumps can be seen in the original movie. There's also a very prominent big tree. We're going to go see that. 
That locks this place in. Let's go. Let's go. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, thanks a lot. We're walking, we're walking this way. Walk this way. Walk talk like a man, like talk like a man. Now, can I stop you? Yes. Yesterday, I made a joke to the people that were here yesterday. Uh, I said that you're not going to believe that the film site has changed over those 50 years. Now they have a McDonald's here. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a joke. <laughs> I know you smell it. it. I know you do. It. Come on, puppy. Come on. actually not 352 it's probably more like 354 based on Bill Munz's analysis of the film where he came up with not 952 frames but 954 frames so, a, so that the film count is a little bit different than what popular belief is so but in that frame is frame that we'll call for the sake of argument frame 352 there is a big tree a big tree a Douglas fir that's prominently seen we're going to go look at that right now. Okay. And in fact, let's go this way. You can't get better, Daniel Perez. You can't. <laughs> Perez. You can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the big tree. So with those three reference points, the two stumps, the big tree, and the Q-stick tree, which is right there, it locks everything in. You've got all the things that you need to make it what it is, which is the Patterson-Gimlin film site. Whoop! Whoop! <laughs> that, that is the big tree right there that you could see very prominently yes. in the film. That's right. And one thing you have to understand, in 50 years, a lot of trees have grown up here. Oh, yeah. So you don't have the same viewpoints as you do back at the time. It was all cleared out quite a bit, quite a bit open. Now you have a lot of trees that have grown and fell down, and the view is not as good as before. Does <laughs> everyone see? Yes. Who, 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 is, who is not convinced that this is the film site? No doubt. No doubt. This is the film site. Yep. Now, I don't mean to say anything bad about N.K. Davis, but at the time when he was rediscovering the film site, I guess I guess he kind of had that American way of thinking that <coughs> this is the new and improved film site, as you see in commercials for soap or whatever. But there, there's no new and improved film site. There's only one film site. This is it. Yeah. So as you can see, just getting down to this area, it's quite remote. So this, this it, people who say that it's filmed close to the city or close to the town, no it's just like, that is not so. That's a falsehood. It makes this it is a, more a amazing. very remote area. Wow. Can I get a photo with you? Sure. <laughs> the tree behind us? Sure, <laughs> absolutely. I'll go on with one more point. Uh, these trees, like the big tree, is named the big tree for obvious. There's another tree off to the right here we call the ladder tree. 
And when Bill Munns was doing a lot of his studies, for sake of familiarity with a certain tree, we called it certain names, and one has a bunch of branches sticking out that are busted, and it looks like a ladder. So we've called that the ladder tree. And then further to the right, there's two trees uh, that we call Laurel and Hardy. There's one that's big and fat and one that's skinny. So they call those Laurel and Hardy. There's another tree that was seen in the original film site that was uh, leaning to the right like this. It's quite tall, but it looked, it was naked of any branches of any leaves, hence the name Q-Stick. Looked like a Q-Stick. It's still here 50 years later. See that thing right there? That's it. That's it. Wow, we shoot. That can be seen in the film as well. That's the remains of the Q-stick tree right there. Wow, Q-stick tree? And so this, what, what makes this really interesting is that 50 years later, all of these landmarks that are attached to the ground are still there. The trees, the stumps. And when I was at a conference in September in Washington State, Mark Marcel, if I'm saying his name correctly, said he was able to find the Ape Canyon uh, cabin yeah. that uh, Fred Beck and his minor companions used by going back to newspaper clippings, archival information in the newspapers, and looking at where the cabin was, a picture of the cabin with stumps. And he said, if I could find those stumps, I can find where the cabin was. He found those stumps and the remains of the cabin with uh, old nails that were there still. And so that's the same technique, if you will, that he used probably without knowing that that technique was used when Steven Strufert and Robert Leiterman rediscovered the film site 2011-2012 because it basically got buried. And one other point is that in 2003, when a bunch of us were here, John Green was still living, for the International Sasquatch Symposium, Todd Neese was here, by the way, yeah. Uh, is that uh, we weren't exactly certain where the film site was, but a group of us, including Dr. Jeff Meldrum, John Green, Matt Moneymaker, Doug Hycheck, Autumn Williams, and myself, we came up the backside of the film site over there. And we came up the bank and we were in all these trees here. So in 2003, we were on the film site without knowing it. Wow. And it, it, it didn't dawn on me till a few years ago. I said, holy cow, <laughs> we were here and we didn't even know it. We were looking around and I'm saying, I'm saying this is it because this is, that's where we came up and we were navigating our way back that way from over there from in, in the creek. Another thing that you'll know about this area is that this film site, when you get around the corner here, the creek turns and goes this way. And when you look at the creek to know that you're there, that creek straightens out. It's called like Bowling Alley Strait. And War the late Warren Thompson, a Bigfoot researcher, was the person who kind of coined that term, the Bowling Alley Strait. The creek gets super straight. And you can see it over there past the film site. So if you know you can find the Bowling Alley straight, you pull back into this area, this is it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's the nickel tour. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Daniel. Daniel. All right. wow. He wants a picture she... with you, Daniel. <laughs> well, well, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Where did she walk off to and go up the hill? Okay. So basically, just in general, you see where they are over there? Uh -huh. The subject is, we'll call her... She's walking, and she makes a little bit of an arc, and she starts walking this way, uh, this way, like mm -hmm. back and forth, uh, somewhat parallel to the creek, off in that direction. Mm -hmm. She crosses the creek uh, onto the Bluff Creek Road, which mm -hmm. was gravel, and she goes up a hillside, oh. and according to Richard Henry, she put a foot on the hillside, and as Richard Henry said, it was an extremely steep, piece of property going up 
and the subject may have made a decision this was not a quick exit route and instead went up the gravel road that way. And so Bob Titmus was here later, the late Bob Titmus, the investigator, at the latter part of October, and he stated that there was very clear evidence where Patty, as she's now affectionately known, was sat on some ferns and had a clear vantage point of Roger and Bob doing their thing down here, making plaster castings. Oh, wow, they're watching. And so what she basically did after the fright went away, Came back on and with a wild animal, fright tends to go away once you get distance between mm. you and whoever's pursuing you. She doubled back, and probably up on this mountainside, you can't see how steep it goes up. Maybe over there where you can see the trees that are high. Right, right. And she's looking down with a clear cover of canopy down to the film site as to what Roger and Bob are doing back over here. Which, and they were making cats. So that, any more questions? So Bob and them approached from that direction? Yes, Bob, Bob, Bob and Roger were coming upstream. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I can't say it's a, a, a for certain fact, but you would tend to get the impression that if the, the water is moving downstream, they're coming upstream, the air might be moving downstream as well, the direction. So if the horses smelled, uh, that their that their scent would have been covered, so it was just one of those chance opportunities where the subject was taken completely off guard, and especially by the fact if she was down drinking water at the creek, maybe her senses were her her ears were hearing the muffle of the water ripples, mm -hmm. so she was blinded in a sense from hearing, and maybe her view too. And she didn't get wind of things till she got up and said, "Like, oh, there's two, there's three horses, two people. I need to get going," which she did. She walked away. So then, with that being said, there was no way of her basically saying, "Okay, I got to protect a young one," and got out of there trying to lure them away from that area. That's all. That's Assumption. all what you would call speculation, speculation. because no yeah. one, even to this day, kn knows that. She had any young ones. Right. It, I mean, most people would argue that she was probably female based on the breast. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that's that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the idea that she had a young one, that's just like, well, maybe she had one, two, three. I mean, then you're Who really right. going off the deep end. Yeah. I think they would have found footprints of the babies. Well, but yeah, they, if they in were, fact, if they were there. In fact, Eric Betchard was one of the first, the late Eric Betchard was one of the first persons that said, uh, that you could see one of the babies on Patty as she walked away and not just simply no. There's no support for that idea. Yeah. It was just Eric Beckford with his oftentimes the researcher were, were making these ideas uh, To get attention for themselves not attention for the subject matter it was just, so. uh, Like you said it was a combination of all things the noise from the water Wasn't it behind an uprooted tree yes. or something? So it was sight sound it At was just Caught off guard. It's good that you should bring that up because mm -hmm. Bob Gimlin stated that there was a uprooted tree with the roots sticking up and he said that it was like as big as a house and there actually is 50 years later there's an uprooted tree root system there with a stump flipped up where you could see the, the roots and I'm wondering if that might be the same one just maybe pushed by the elements over mm -hmm. 50 years. Mm -hmm. And it's still out there. If anything, it would be downstream a little bit if, you know, yeah. where he said it was. And like the, the conditions you see today are probably very much like the same conditions, weather conditions. Roger and Bob said it was a, it was a cool day, but it was sunny. And so they had at the time good, good blue skies and the rains didn't, the rains didn't come in until after midnight on the 21st. Mm. Wow. In a sense, this is the same day, yeah. October 20th. Sure. This yeah. is yeah. 50 yeah. Well, years right. later. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so if people, if people say the argument is like, well, why haven't we got one now? My comeback would be is that the, the population of the species would be very low in general. Like if you look at the wolverine, the state biologists say, and then this was in the newsletter, the Bigfoot Times, uh, uh, just a couple of years ago, they recorded by camera, trip camera, I guess, one wolverine in the state of California. 
So we know we have one Wolverine in the <laughs> state of California. So here's here's the, the comment. Okay, if there's only one in the state of California, how often do you think people will see it? Not very often. Hardly no, ever. Exactly. So say for the sake of argument, there might be six Bigfoot in just Northern California spread out. How often do you think you'll mm, see them? No. Hardly very, ever. very mm -hmm. infrequently. Yeah. So it almost seems like you're dealing with uh, a ghost or an apparition or mm. something of that nature rather than reality but the reality of the matter the less the population the less that you're going to see them well, totally. well, what yeah. about the gene pool as far as i mean there would have to be i mean we all know there's bear you know and and things like that in the wild too and and maybe one will get spotted every so many years or whatever of a certain type but we, we know that there's thousands of them out there so wouldn't we could could we also use that same thought process to for the squash I mean honestly we know they're there I mean I've had personal experience uh, you know nothing super hard concrete or anything but just personal but we know that they're there we know that there are a lot of them there but they're just elusive as hell that that's true I mean you think you think about their basic framework they're built similar to us uh, hair covered and you think about we think of ourselves as the most intelligent animal life form on the planet, which is probably so. I mean, you could see what we've, how we've altered the planet. So you look at a species like this, and it's it, just by maybe guessing, you would say like, there's probably endowed by an extreme high cranial capacity to think and to reason and to, to make deductions. And that might be what's going on there. It's just like there might be a tremendous thought process there that we are not aware of. Because like I tell any, everyone who's willing to listen, we are studying Sasquatch reports, not Sasquatches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's True. a very crucial differentiation uh, difference. But by the so. reports, we can also get an idea of where they roam and, and geography, uh, top, you know, geography called areas that's in there as far as plant life, wildlife, and stuff like that, which we could speculate on a good habitat for. It's all and, speculation. And this, this here, you look at this area, this is, this is like tremendous country for Bigfoot. And another thing I wanted to point out too is that when people talk about the Patterson-Gimlin film, is they think of it as a singular one-time deal. And so when they start talking about it, they're, they're almost, they're missing, the, they're, they're not telling you the full story. They don't realize that in August and September, Rene DeHinden and John Green were here investigating other reports of tracks. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there was a, a preload to the whole thing working up. It wasn't some single isolated mm -hmm. incident. It's just like Patty may have been part of another group that Green and DeHinden saw early August and September. Sure. And she just happened to be by herself at the time. Wow. So that's that's the way. and and. The Blue Creek Mountain Road, uh, Onion Mountain, and all of, all of those mountains are part of a chain up here. They're, they're all connected. It's not like the Blue Creek Mountain is 10 million miles away. Mm. It's six miles away from here. It's not that far. And so this is all part of a ridge system. And it's just like if you're a wild animal, this, this is your highway mm. to get around. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the idea of padding be, being here it's not that foreign to me or when you start to think about the matter with some intelligence. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. Thank awesome. you again, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks. Yeah. Wow. There's, I didn't even know I was giving a tour. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. But what I wanted to do for myself, because I've been involved uh, since I'm 54, I've been involved since 1973 when I saw The, Le the Legend of Boggy Creek. Mm. So I was 10 at the time. And so I said, if there's any place on the planet I want to be on the 50th anniversary of the film, it's right here. Right? <laughs> yeah. Signing the guest book. A T-ball game, yeah. 50 years ago today, Patterson <laughs> Gilman filmed right. this here at this location. There we go. Who's next? Oh, yeah, because when he said it, we're going over the calendar probably about four months ago. Right. It's a right. so we've here. got <laughs> Reach a Weekend. And of course, if you just go right back to Willow Creek,
there's gas about seven said, eight you have fun in ohio <laughs> i'm coming here <laughs> i'm glad you did oh yeah i would look at that oh my gosh no. look at that i mean you're here 50 years later I know. awesome how old are you then when the patterson gilma film was made they've got the cheapest gas i think in the county I was, well, I was four. I was, well, I was seven. She was seven. I was old enough. I seven. Was seven. You were four. Four years old. How old were you? I was five. In sixty-seven. Yeah. I don't remember. I was young. <laughs> yeah. He was younger than me. I wasn't born, born yet. You weren't born yet. Sixty-three. I was born in sixty-four. You were four. I was about four years old. Okay. I was five. Okay. Yeah. I feel like a long time ago. I was a little girl. I was a little girl. Oh, you're 54? I am getting old. Born in June. I'm going to be 58 a lot of December. Really Check out Dave down there. <laughs> well, yeah. gotta take some pictures. This weekend, right? Nice to meet you as well. We'll be here Thank Saturday you. and Sunday. You okay. Thank and you. Monday. Thank you for the tour. Yes. He's filming you, honey. Bigfoot okay. you Times. Bigfoot Times. Bigfoottimes.net. Oh, Bigfoottimes.net. Bigfoottimes.net. Yes. Subscribe. So we're now leaving. We're leaving. Yes. Yeah. Put the camera away. Are coming back with us? Are you guys staying or leaving? Should we take pictures while we're here? We are at the Patterson Gillum site, right where the creek is here. We're here at the water. So, uh, Roger and Bob were right over there. And uh, they believe that Patters, Patty, Bigfoot, climbed up the embankment and went that way, in that direction. Oh, hi. Point again, point again. Up there. Up there. That's pretty damn cool. Look at him. I'm glad he's young. Right over here, Alright, so we're pretty much like from the angle, Diane, right here, okay. where the horse reared. This is the angle. Yeah, yeah. Because he was shaking the camera, we didn't see it down. go up the embankment. And But the embankment wasn't very... It wasn't as high as that? No, oh no, no, no. Because no. the, the, the creek has shifted a little bit also by digging out, because when the water's high, it's, right. it's really coming through. Right. And so it's actually lower than it was then. Mm -hmm. The bank was nowhere near that high at the time of the uh, filming. And then he followed after her that way. And yeah. And, and she, went, she went that way, and then she crossed the creek over there and got up on the road, and, and that was it. Well... How was that for a surprise after hours with Richter? Bluff Creek, 50th anniversary, October 20th. Her history was made in the world of Sasquatch. Whether you believe or you don't, this is quite the pil pilgrimage for Bigfoot fans, researchers, and enthusiasts. And I am very happy and lucky to have been a part of this, and I'm very thankful. My opinion on the patterson Gilman film bounces back and forth, and I think it's okay to change your mind and think it's real one day and not think it's real the other because we need to question everything. I am coming away from this historical Sasquatch site as someone that thinks if someone is gonna hoax, why would they go so far and so remote to do it? Because it's not easy to get here. And though apparently there was once a logging road where it was easier for people to access this creek. Nonetheless, uh, today I'm leaning toward Patterson Gilman, the film being real. So it's a good day. Tomorrow, I might change my mind. I don't know. I'm kind of bitchy like that. She knows I'm bitchy like that. Oh my God. We're crossing the water again. Oh my God. <sighs> 
Why are we crossing it again? Because there's, they can't get through down there, I don't think. Oh god, it's awfully deep. It's deep here. Yeah. And we can't walk up that way, huh? Oh, I think that's what they did, but then they crossed over right there because they couldn't get through any further, so it's too deep here for you. Oh my god. We're crossing across the water again. Then my sketcher sneakers. Mama Diane says, put the phone away, but we're going to get her falling in the river. You're going to have to be aware that the current pushing against your legs. Here. All right. Okay. So Diane Neese and I are trying to find our way back to regroup with the others. She got sidetracked by taking a big picture of a giant fungus. Oh yeah. Probably some kind of a mushroom, but I don't know. Careful. So I decided to record this and make this to be the second to the last after hours. <laughs> and I think it's cool that I'm doing this with you because you have been so good to me and Tammy over the years. Oh, gosh. I mean, there we go. No, I'm serious. Where are you? I don't see. All right. So. Oh. I think we should probably go down here. Yeah. Beautiful. Root ball. So we just got done hiking to the actual location where Bigfoot was filmed 50 years ago today. Where Patty was filmed. It's still a Bigfoot. 50 years ago today. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. And I think it's awesome I got to do it with Abe Del Riolo. No. <laughs> and my Bigfoot mom. Yeah, I'm his mom. Diane Stocking Knees. Oh, that's me. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah. It was awesome. This is going to be the second to last after hours I'm doing. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, farewell. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so. that didn't sound all that great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got more people coming. I see people. Well, I got turtles that move faster than you guys. Damn. If Richter can do it. Hey, so here we go. So I just wanted to say thank you for being so good to me and Tammy over the years. Well, that's because I love you guys very yep. much. So. Yep. I'll always be there for you. Always. Come on, you guys. We are on time. <laughs> He's got a cute butt. I'm gonna grab it. There we go. Good job. Finger it. Yeah. You like that, Abe? I'm fingering your butt. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh, there. There's the good stuff right there. Oh. Tickle, 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 tickle. Wait, you make it feel uncomfortable. I know. There we go. There you go. <laughs> we had a good time. We had a great adventure today. Uh, Thank you for all your support. I, gee, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't reaching for it until you jumped. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but no, seriously, we had a good time. Yeah. Memories being made. And we're wet. Yep. That's what squatching is, man. Yeah. Gotta get dirty. Jeez, gotta get wet. Yes. Gotta get dirty. Gotta get wet. Gotta get your squatch on it. Check out his blog talk uh, radio show, MNBRT. He needs a few more viewers and just the one that tuned in for him while we were driving up here. And thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next After Hours is going to be our very last one. So we hope to see you there. Make your life exciting. Don't make it in a bookstore. <laughs>
Come on, get out of the bookstore, Steven. I have no life. It's all Bigfoot. 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 Ah. Get out. Go into the city. Go into the city and you can find friends. Real friends.